Hey guys, what's up? So today, I guess, we'll continue on with another Mistbuster video for you guys. So today's video, I'll offer you the Afono Palma species. Granted, the video will be a little bit shorter than most because I really don't know very much about them. So this video will only apply to the species I've kept, the A. Anox and the A. Calcodes, but I'm sure it will apply to many of the other species that are out there, like for example the Hensi, uh, the Idios, uh, Carl's Bad Green, Flagstaff Orange, A Species New River, uh, Moderatum, and so forth. Okay, so, away we go. Okay, so, if you're going to talk about the A. Anax, the only common name that I th think of is the Texas Tan. And the A. Calcodes, <laughs> It's a plethora of common names, so they range from, well this one ranges from Texas. The A. Calcodes has a little more wider distribution, I you can find them in Tucson, Arizona and in sometimes in places like Mexico. So sometimes they'll have it labeled as a Mexican blonde, the desert blonde because it's a desert species. Uh, they call it the Arizona blonde and then the Tucson blonde. So the same thing. Okay, so the Latin names is Aphonopalma anox and Aphonopalma calcodes. So this is how you pronounce it, Aphonopalma, which should be very easy to pronounce. Uh, this one here is anax or anox. And this one here, because the H is silent, we call it calcodes. So this is how you say it. And people like to call this language the Aphonos. Okay, so the cost and availability. Okay, in the Canadian market, it is very rare to even find a Phonopelma species here uh, because of the importations laws that the U.S. has and they ban their imports of their tarantulas over here, which kind of sucks. So, if anyone has a Phonopelma species here, please breed them because you're looking at a potential buyer here. Okay, but the U.S. costs, I really don't tend to familiarize with them because I'm in Canada and I can't buy teas off the U.S. because of, uh, you know, with customs and everything. So I would probably assume slings go for like as little as $10. Adults will probably range to like 30 to 50 I think the most expensive one out there is the Aphonopalma Moderatum. My dream Aphonopalma that I want to own. Uh, a sling was going on sale in Canada for about $95 for an inch and a half. And adults will probably range you into the $200 mark. Also, to take into account the Fono Palma by Colorado, which is the Mexican blood lake, it can be even more expensive, as around $250 if it's an adult female. Because they're very rare and they're very similar to the Bracket Palma Bomi, except they're the more smaller variety. Okay, so the size and the mature males and mature females. Okay, so the size, the Phonopalmas are actually one of the smaller uh, type T's. Uh, they get having a four to four and a half inches in leg span. I don't, the thing, the biggest one I have right now is an Asimani, but I'm going to do a separate video on that because it's a little bit different than most of the Phonopalma species. So mature males, they should be really obvious for mature males. So I'll give you an example with a Calcodes. This is what a female looks like. I don't even know if this is a Calcodes or not. You can see the prominent blonde colors on the legs. Right over here. And in mature males, all of it is black. They have tibble hooks and they will have bulbous pops and they'll have the tan carapace and a red abdomen kinda like the uh, B. albiceps and here is the A. anox uh, Texas uh, tan that I got from Mac and Cass again males will look maybe similar to the species Said they may have be a little shade of brown in there. Okay. 
Now about the enclosure setup, so these are New World Terrestrials, so pretty much a critter keeper for an adult that's fine. You can go 5 gallon tank, but that's honestly way too big for one, but that I wouldn't go over that size. So I pretty much uh, have a court bark on the side, water dish, some eco worse, some like to borrow than others, like my Anox did and my Calcodes hasn't. I know it's on vermiculite, but I'm going to be changing it this summer. It's too cold to change uh, the substrate now. So that's pretty much it for enclosures, care sheets. Uh, pretty much you keep it like a rose hair and it'll be fine. Uh, they like it fairly dry. I would probably do maybe the odd um, misting or two. So just keep an open water dish, fill it up at all times and you'll do fine. These pieces are really easy to uh, keep. Feeding is sometimes not always uh, you won't, you won't get a great feeding responses for some of them. Like my eight Onox will eat rarely. If you saw the video of me feeding her, she ate rarely. My Calcodes behaves a lot like Rosaires, uh, and they really tend to refuse food. But the growth rate on it, it's like really slow. So, picture molasses, and you're trying to empty out its contents. So by the time it takes the molasses to fully empty into a little cup, that's how slow the phonopalmas are. These are really slow growing species. They take in excess 8 to 10 years before they fully mature from a little newborn to about a four and a half inches. So she's kind of special and very unique as this phonopalma has molted. Well, she molted in two, a year ago but her last molt was back in 2000 so that gives you an idea of how slow their molting process is and their molt cycle that's a very beautiful species nonetheless and so i'm very lucky to actually get this one about 10 to 15 years ago so that was great and yanox i can't believe it i'm just i just got lucky on this one so temperaments <sighs> I'll be honest with you, they behave a lot like rose hairs. Uh, they are tend to be moody but docile. So just be wise on handling. So I'll just give you a demonstration of my Calcoes and see how well she is. The Aeonox, granted when I transferred her, she was a little mean. But then again, she got calmer as she settled down. So let's just prod her just a paintbrush to see how well she, her temperament is. As you can see, she, these are very slow moving tarantulas, so they're recommended for a beginner. Uh, they rarely flick hairs, which is also a good thing. But sometimes what they do is that they like to raise their abdomen. <laughs> it's a sign that they're pissed off. Okay, about breeding, I really don't know. Um, the breeding capabilities of these species. I would assume that they're fairly easy to breed. Uh, just make sure that you freshly had the female freshly molted, keep her well fed like I'm doing right now with my P. Urminia and uh, you'll do fine. I really don't know how much slings they'll get out of it. I would probably expect within the uh, 200, maybe 300 if you're lucky. And that's pretty much it. So basically I recommend this to a beginner who doesn't want a rose hair. Very awesome species, very colorful too. A lot be a little bit smaller than most, but people like to start off with small teas and you know that's perfectly fine. Very easy to take care of. And it's uh, overall a great tea to own. No, it's too bad that we can't get any Afono Palmas here in Canada. I wish, because uh, I would love a to breed them and uh, start to distribute them to Canadian hobbyists but what can you do eh? So that's the video of the Mythbuster video of the Phonopalma Calcodes so hope you enjoyed it.